Accutane, also known as Epurus, is one of the most effective drugs on the planet for treating acne. I use it very often in my patients with recalcitrant acne. That's acne that's very difficult to uh, rub out with any other form of therapy. Uh, they tried all the topicals, all the over-the-counter stuff. They tried antibiotics, benzoyl peroxide, the stuff you see on TV being advertised. None of it works. They come to me for help, prescribe them Accutane, also known as Epurus now, and it's like magic. But, and there's always a but, Every drug has potential costs and side effects. So in this episode, we're going to look at what are the seven most common side effects that you might encounter if you were to start Accutane or Epurus. And by knowing the actual associated statistical risks, is it the right choice for you if it's something you were considering? The doctor is in. So this is your pal, Dr. Sal. Thank you so much for joining me. In this episode, as promised, we're gonna be going through the seven most common side effects that you can anticipate if you were to shake my hand and go on Accutane, also known as Epurus. So we're gonna do it with a little case study because there's a lot of horror stories on the internet. Um, but a lot of that is just like uh, driving a vehicle where there's a few cases every year of fatalities and horrible mashups. But most people are pretty safe on the road in their vehicle. Uh, and most accidents you can walk away from. It's very similar with most uh, drugs. But it's a lot better to jump in with your eyes wide open and know the statistical expectations of uh, using any drug that you're considering. So this is... Um, this is just a fictional character here. This is Adam, and he's suffering with some bad acne on his T-zone. And he comes in, he's tried all the over-counter stuff, all the magic formulas that you see on TV, none of them work, waste of money, waste of time. And he wants something that he's pretty much guaranteed to get some decent results with. So, I decide, well, let's consider using Epurus, also known as Accutane, AKA Isotretinoin. Now trust me, I don't name these drugs. Whoever names him probably should be fired, but that's another story. So uh, what I'll do here is illustrate with a pie chart what the likelihood of running into trouble um, would look like. So pie chart, as you know, always starts with a nice big juicy circle. And in this case, I'll just make it uh, look like a little person. So this is, um, Angel, and she also is suffering with acne, and that's not Angel, it's Angel. And we're gonna use her face here as a pie chart and illustrate what the likelihood of suffering with side effects on the Epurus or Accutane would be. So first off, the most common side effect by far suffered with by close to 50% of people is dry syndromes. So I'm just gonna go ahead here and put a line straight down the center here. And that will be our 50%. It's not quite 50%, it's uh, like 47, 48, 49%. But we'll just round it off and call it 50%. So half of people taking um, Accutane or Epurus will complain of suffering with things like um, dry, all, all things dry, so dry skin, dry eyes, dry dry lips dry 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 so to illustrate that i'll just draw some little flakes and cracks and stuff now obviously the the reason why in, in fact if you're suffering with dry symptoms that's a good indicator right there that the accutane is working because that's how it reduces your pimples and acne it dries out the um the the oil stores inside the little uh, glands so to me, if you're suffering with dry symptoms, that's actually a plus. It means the drug is doing what it's supposed to. But sometimes it can get annoying. Um, like some people suffer with cracked skin or uh, their eyes start burning or getting sore or their lips get chapped and sore as a consequence of this drying out phenomenon. So again, the most, the dominant thing you need to worry about, most common by far, is dry syndromes. Now, next, 
um, if we consider that, that would be 25%. So I'm going to make a line going up here for 10%. So this guy here, 10%. So 10 in 100 people complain of joint aches, which we also call arthralgias. So joint aches. Typically in my experience, uh, they're not severe. They're usually minor and you can get past them. Um, I've never had a case where I had to discontinue somebody's therapy because the joint aches were so severe that they just couldn't stand it. I'm not saying that that couldn't happen somewhere in, in the universe here, but in my experience, it's never happened. All right, next up, also at weighing in at 10%. So there's another 10% risk here. So 10 out of every 100 people uh, complain of nosebleeds, which is also known as epistaxis. So nosebleeds. Again, the reason for that is again, this is really just a variation on this same theme of the dryness. The lining inside the nose gets dried out as a consequence of the taking the drug. And then it can lead to cracks in the lining, which then leads to um, nosebleeds. Uh, again, in my experience, I've never had anybody with nosebleeds severe enough that I had to abandon the therapy, but I'm sure there's gonna be cases out there where, where there was just torrential bleeding, especially if you tend to already be uh, be prone to having nosebleeds. All right, then we're gonna gonna um, go down to the lightweights. So this is a five percent guy here. Five percent of people complain of vision change, not vision loss, but visual acuity reduction. And again, that is related to that drying effect. Uh, as the eye dries and the lens dries, it can change the the um, ability of the eye to accommodate and to focus. Um, and this is typically reversible once you stop the uh, medication. Oh, and by the way, the medication, um, just in case you weren't already aware of it, the Accutane and the Epirus, they're not topicals, um, they're actually oral medicines. They come in little capsules or tablets and you just down them every day and it does its thing, typically for uh, 12 weeks. Um, all right, weighing in, another little lightweight here, another five percenter. This would be uh, fatigue is another common complaint. Well, actually, relatively common. In, and by common, I mean more than 1% of people. So fatigue. But fatigue is kind of a, a tricky one because there's so many things in modern life that can cause fatigue. It, it's hard to tease that out in studies that it's really the drug causing the fatigue because everything causes fatigue. All right, then another 5% risk. So five in every hundred people uh, is muscle aches. So this one here was arthralgias, joint aches. This is muscle aches this time now, where your muscles are hurting. And we call that myalgias. Again, not that common. Five in every hundred people, it's not common. All right, then I'm just gonna leave a little slice here of another little 5% here, we'll call this other. So all the other horror stories that you hear about on the internet, all the worst case scenarios, all those things are bundled into this, this little group here. Um, and most, most of those cases that you hear of, of um, for example, severe depression, people committing suicide, or um, what's some of the other ones? People with their liver blowing up or kidney blowing up, all that kind of stuff. That's typically less than 1%. Um, another relatively common one, another heavyweight, 10% would be headaches. Why that is the mechanism of that, I'm not exactly sure, but almost any drug that you take, some people are gonna get headaches from it. The brain just doesn't like tampering in general, so some people's brains are more sensitive to chemicals than others. Now, uh, the biggest, now, even though I said that um, some things like, in this less than 1% case would be things like uh, liver failure, uh, pancreatic or pancreatitis, kidney f or renal failure. All these horrible specters uh, typically are reversible once the drug is discontinued. Um, and in my personal experience, what I've typically seen is the liver one, but never to the point where it was like fulminant hepatitis. Is typically just minor elevation in, in the liver enzymes that the liver spills out. Um, and I've seen one case that I that I didn't actually treat, 
<clears throat> but that had suffered pancreatitis while they were taking, or they attributed it to uh, taking Accutane. And when I saw them, I think they were like in their 20s. So it was quite likely that it was from their Accutane treatment. Unfortunately, whoever had prescribed it to them didn't take the second step, which is what I do for all my patients uh, taking Epirus or, or Accutane to mitigate these risks. So even though they're not very common, they're less than 1%, they're very consequential if they do happen. So to put things in perspective, uh, if you think about meteorites hitting the earth, right now the success, or I guess you'd call it failure rate, is uh, one in four and a half billion, because the earth has been around for four and a half billion years, and to my knowledge, we've only had one planet ending uh, meteorite so far. So you might say, wow, one in four and a half billion chances, well that's absolutely minuscule. But uh, if you talk to the dinosaurs, they would tell you different. Just because something has a really small um, uh, likelihood of an event happening, if it's very consequential, then it's still very important. So knowing that this is a, a potential specter with Accutane and Epirus, what I typically do with my patients when I'm starting on them is after the first month of treatment, I'll typically send them in for blood work to check their blood count because it can also affect white cells and a bunch of other parameters. So I'll send them in to check their CBC, the blood count. I'll also check them for their LFTs, which is liver function. Oh, is that showing there? Oh, it's running off the page. Um, and then I'll also check their pancreatic enzymes and check their creatinine and urea bun for renal function. So that's how I can capture any damage before it goes too far and causes somebody serious harm. So if you are being prescribed Accutane um, and whoever is prescribing it to you doesn't mention getting some lab work, you probably should ask them up front if they can monitor your condition uh, probably after the first month as, as I do uh, for any potential risky side effects. The other thing is um, in a few cases, if somebody came in, most cases of people coming in for Accutane, they're usually like in their tweens and twenties. So most of the time I won't bother with a pre-initiation set of lab work because I just assume that they're healthy. If they're looking healthy to me, they walk like a duck, they quack like a duck, I assume they're a duck. But there are a few cases of people that have pre-existing uh, conditions. Just because you're young doesn't mean you can't be touched. So for example, suppose somebody told me, um, uh, maybe, maybe that they had some kind of kidney problem as a kid. They had ver vesic vesicouteral reflux or something, and and maybe had a stent put in or something. If somebody ha gives me a, a kind of f f queasy, funny kind of story like that, then I may also run these same labs before starting the Accutane to assess what their baseline numbers are, make sure that there's no risk built into them before they even start the drug. But for most cases, uh, people who have been healthy their entire life, I won't bother with the initial set of labs. I'll just go straight to try the drug. 30 days later, if you don't notice any symptoms, get me some blood work. Doesn't matter if you're feeling symptoms or not. Very often the first signs of um, chinks in your armor are in the blood work long before you start looking jaundiced or start having an incredible belly pains and cramps, etc. So that, ladies and gentlemen, is Accutane, also known as Epirus, and how you could safely uh, use it, and the most likely side effects that you could expect if you were to initiate on it. In general, it is the most uh, potent treatment so far that I've seen in my career for acne treatment. I find it works very well, but you still have to go in with your eyes open and realize that there can be some risks. So I hope that this uh, presentation dispels some of the myths around it and um, you'll give it some consideration and get your skin cleared up. Thanks for watching. Next time I'll share some more doctor secrets. Thanks for watching. Get notified of new videos. Subscribe now.